Let's go to Danny in Boston, Massachusetts. What's up, Danny? Hi, Dr. D. How are you? I'm good, doing good. How are you? Just saving the world. I, you know what? I probably overstated that a little bit. I don't think I am saving the world. But <laughs> we're having fun. How about you? I, I'm doing good. I got I got to talk to Kelly when she called me, which She's was probably the worst. so far like the most exciting part of this. And I'm really excited to talk to you. Was so she mean you. to you? She was amazing. I know. My, I know. That's what she does. She has all you yeah. folks on the phone <laughs> thinking she's so kind and wonderful. And then we have to live with her. Just kidding. She's incredible. <laughs> she's like the best. Kelly's the best. She is. She's awesome. So she what's is. up? How can I help? Yeah. So thank you so much for taking my call. Um, I think, you know, I have uh, my, I'm struggling with my, my dad. Um, he's part of a very fundamentalist Christian community and they have a very specific view on religion and the interpretation of the Bible and that theirs is the only like right way to live. Uh, it is, it is, (laughs) there are no other ways they figured it out, but go ahead. Yeah. And so I think as I've gotten older and I have children and I have, I have, you know, I left that community when I was in my early twenties. Um, it, I'm struggling to have a relationship with him. He's, he's, you know, he's always been there for me. Like he'll talk to me, but every conversation is about, you know, it's, it's, he always gets, he always gets the little snippets in and it's, it just feels like a constant reminder that he thinks I'm not living my life the way or raising my kids the way that it should be. And that he has to save me. So gotcha. and I, and I'm just really struggling with that conversation with him. <sighs> Can I just tell you, I hate that for you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so go back to childhood. You left this group. Why'd you leave? Was it a belief um, issue? Was it the way they treated you? Was it the way the things they said? Why'd you leave? So, um, so, so I, I was, so, oh, <laughs> why'd I leave? That's a good question. Um, they, they, um, th- that particular Just say it out loud. Say it out loud. Say it out yeah. loud. I know it's hard. To, I know, so, hey, I know that yeah. I'm poking at some deep, deep stuff. As much as you feel comfortable, just say it out loud. Yeah. So they do practice shunning. And, um, at the time I was shunning? married shunning. Yep. So like if you like Dwight and, divorced, and Jim, like shun, <laughs> yeah, just like Dwight and Jim. Yeah. Listen, I've yeah. worked with all kinds of religious communities my whole career. I've never, I'm not, I'm not mocking. I never heard of this. So what does it mean? Like okay. we turn our back on you. Like we shun. Um, um, it's, yep. It's intended to be to be loving, like your, 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 one of your flock has gone astray and, you know, and they'll, they'll realize that they made a mistake and come back into your loving arms kind of thing. I thought Jesus went, left the 99 and went and got that other one. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good, that's a good point. Yeah. Okay. So, so okay. So back that thing up. Yeah. So you, no, I shouldn't say that out. Like, don't, you don't back that thing up. I'm backing up. Um, so they shunned. Yeah. So I, I basically, so I was married, I was married very young. I found myself in a not great relationship. Um, so I left, but I basically preemptively personally cut off almost all ties because I knew the other option was they were going to sort of do it for me. So I, when I was 25, I, I essentially like completely started over. Now my, my, my dad or my, like my, he never, he never cut me off. So I, I still have that. Rela- yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I still have that relationship. Um, but you know, it, it's, um, it, you, you know, like, you know, they, they feel that you're making a tragic mistake. Right. And that it's their job to try to so the, the, save you like you, that's in the back of your mind in every conversation. So the shunning, like you, you got a divorce, you got married young, and there yep. were some things in that marriage that didn't sit with you. You got divorced and you knew by making this decision to leave your husband and do something else with your life, that was also going to cost you your faith community. And so instead of yeah. going through their trial or whatever, um, yeah. 
rigmarole they're going to put you through. You just said, deuces, I'm out. My guess is there's more to it than that, that you left for bigger reasons than just they were going to be mean to you. And so you, you preemptively, you shunned them before they shunned you. <laughs> but here, here, um, here, here's what I'm asking. Yeah. So there's, we have belief disagreements with people. So let's mm -hmm. take something that's not that big of a deal, like vaccination status, right? Mm -hmm. And that's me being facetious of everyone's, it's a whole thing. <laughs> um, I get that somebody looks at the data and believes the right thing for me to do is to get vaccinated. I also understand why someone would say, I'm looking at all of the chaos and saying, I want no part of that until right. there's some clarity. And then I also understand, less so, but I understand that there's some guy in the trunk of his car with a YouTube channel with 11 followers, and he's like, guess what's happening now? And that you think that's <laughs> the person who's discovered truth. I get that too, right? All right. All three of them. But ultimately, those are, you're going to come down on belief issues, and you're going to hang out and go have a drink with somebody, and then they're going to be like, bro, you know you should be, and they're going to give you their spiel, whatever their spiel right. happens to be. Those are belief issues, fine. It's different when there's trauma at the bottom of it. So we've heard about when it comes to vaccinations that African-American community might have some challenges because they remember the Tuskegee disaster. Mm -hmm. Be like, hey, we're not walking into some emergency authorization use thing. We've done this before. And y'all used right. it to... Poison. I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah, or yeah, in, yeah. in your case, you get to, like, this isn't just about, hey, you should be going to this church or we're going to that one. If there's trauma at the bottom of this, if there were things told to you about how women were or should be or the way you were treated or the way you were told to shun people who were hurting into loving them, whatever the things are— if there's a trauma basis here, your body's going to get set off. And that's different than a belief difference. You hear what I'm saying? Yes. When somebody believes, I need, I, we're having a medical disagreement on the vaccine, that's one thing. When somebody believes the government's trying to kill my kids, it's a different response. <laughs> Whether I believe them or not, I get that response is visceral. Right. Or someone doesn't have the vaccine. I believe my neighbor's trying to murder my family, <laughs> right? I get that there's a, there's a visceralness. So where, where are you on this? Is it just a belief difference? Or did you walk out of this thing because there was some trauma there? There was some hurt there? Um, I think, so yeah, so I don't, I don't know that I've, I don't, I don't know that I walked out. Um, so, so the marriage wasn't great. Like, mm -hmm. um, there was anger issues, mm -hmm. but, um, which I, I didn't, I, I wanted no part of, I wanted to, you know, before it escalated. So I, I, that was part of it. But, um, the fact, Hey, listen, I the fact that you think you owe some knuckleheaded podcaster on the radio an explanation <laughs> as to why you left your marriage that many years ago tells me you've got some, that you were told that your job is to make sure everybody's okay and everybody approves of your decisions before you move forward. Yeah, I mean, my dad was, he was pretty angry growing up. He never. That's, that's all you gotta say. That's all, hey, that's all you gotta say. Yeah. That's all you gotta say. So the, when I'm talking to you about what this, what this group left in you and on you, your body's responding right now, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> so is. let's fast forward to the original question that you asked me about. <laughs> Here's why we're here. This isn't a matter of like, dad, I don't believe in shunning. I believe in hugging. And we're just going to have to, <laughs> we're going to have to, we're just going to have to call a spade a spade on that one. This is not that. This is your dad is trying to bring you to something that he thinks in his heart is going to help you. Yeah. And that your body knows hurt you. And by your, by the tears being so close, it still hurts you. It's still in you. Yeah. Right. 
there's still unresolved trauma there that you and I could probably go hang out and have a beer and talk about it for a long, long time, <laughs> right? Yeah. The point here is this. You do not have to put your body in that situation. And you don't have to put your kids in that situation. Because that's the other part is you don't want your kids to experience what you experience. True. Yes. And so the big, the big magic word here is boundary. And that's a simple word, but it's hard. because it, And it's devastating it because you know the other side of shunning is you lose your dad. And here's what I need you to hear yeah. me say. That's his choice, not yours. Yes. And that sucks. We will go to the ends of the earth to not put our parents in a position to choose something over us when we know they're going to choose the other thing. Yeah. We don't want to face that reality. So we just put up with it and put up with it and put up with it. And then all of a sudden, we've imparted that on our kids. And then they do it and then they do it and they do it. And then it gets passed on generation after generation after generation. Yeah. And so somebody yeah. has to stare this sucker down and say, <laughs> if you bring up this again, you're my dad. I love you. Um, it sounds to me like you've got some stuff you needed to work through with a counselor yeah. about your dad. Um, <laughs> not probably a hundred percent chance, hundred percent chance. <laughs> Are you married now? Yes. Yes. Good guy. Amazing. I'm very blessed. If he was behind you and heard me say, you should probably go to counselor and get work on some of your dad's stuff. He would probably be nodding his head vigorously, right? <laughs> he would be very supportive. Yes, he, I'm sure he would. So for you, go do that. Okay. 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 And there's going to be some stuff about your dad you're going to have to face. It's going to be ugly and messy and gross. And you don't want to think about it because you love him. And he is a good guy. Yeah. But you got to stare that stuff down because your body knows. Yeah. And when he calls, your heart beats a little bit faster. And when he says he's coming over, your heart beats a lot faster. And you go a little bit more limbic and you're a little bit more tense. And you hold cups a little bit tighter. And all of that energy and electricity gets passed on and passed on and passed on. And I want yeah. you to be able to sleep. And we we did have um, a conversation, and it was exactly kind of how you described. Like I just I just snapped. Like I com I felt like after it was over, I was like, what what being took over my body? <laughs> like words were coming out that I <laughs> didn't even like I like things I felt but were buried so deep. I don't know that I ever acknowledged. And mm -hmm. I I asked him. I was like, I can't like I can't have. I can't keep having these conversations with you. Like I need to have a relationship that revolves. That's more than this. He's had some health issues. So it's, it's been him almost dying or <laughs> it's been, you know, this for the past like three years. And, um, he, 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 he doesn't, he doesn't under, he's very, and like he tries to understand and he just, but he doesn't. And I, and I, if I feel like I tried, I'm not good at boundaries. I know that I feel like I tried really hard and now I'm, feeling so uncomfortable because I feel like there's this unsettled problem between us and I don't do that. So I listen, that well there <laughs> is, there is an unsettled problem between the two of you and you can't fix it. And that's the, that's the, the heartbreaking part. You can't yeah. solve it. He can cause he's dad. Yeah. And I know that hurts. You can't fix that one. And I just thought of this just now, but I can imagine a world where your body, your brain, your heart feels like a boundary protecting you and your kids is akin to shunning. And some part of you swore I will never shun anybody for anything for any reason. And so here's what I want you to think through. A boundary is not a shun. A boundary is you simply saying, this is what I need to be okay. And if you are willing to help me be well or to love me enough or to respect me enough or to, to have enough dignity, be a person of character enough to listen to the things that I need to be well, I am yours and you're mine. And if you choose your things over the things I'm telling you out loud, I need to feel safe and feel well, then you are choosing to not be a part of my life. And that breaks my heart, but that's your choice. 
You see how everything about this is his choice. Yes. Except for the, the boundaries, except for your choice to take care of you and your kids and your husband. Right. And I hate, hate, hate that you have to do this, but you do. Yeah. <laughs> I hate it for you. I'm okay. I am. Um... <laughs> Whenever my <laughs> six-year-old daughter is sprinting through the house and all of a sudden we just hear a wham and she crashes it, she'll go, you'll, we'll hear this, I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> she's clearly not okay. She doesn't want us to get up and go see what she's trying to sneak into the other room. <laughs> You're clearly yeah, I, not okay, Danny. And listen, it's okay to not be okay. You're right. This is going to yeah. hurt. It's going to hurt. And that's still okay. It's right. Yes. Yeah. So here's what I want you to do. You've heard me say this a million times. I'm going to say it a million more times. I want you to write a letter to your dad. Okay. About everything. All of it. You can even have sections called good stuff and bad stuff. I don't care what it <laughs> yeah. is. As a part of the letter at the end, I want you to say, so now what? And that's when I want you to articulate. After you've written the good stuff, the stuff that you love about him, after you've really, I want you to, like you just said, I felt like I was possessed. Something took over me. I want you to bring that. I want you to let your limbic brain take back over for a minute. I want you to go there. Yeah. And then I want you to write down, so here's what's not acceptable in my life anymore. I'm choosing to be well, and here's what that's going to look like for me. And then I want you to read this letter out loud to your husband. Okay. Because he doesn't know it all, does he? No. Nope. I want you to read it out loud to him. Okay. And then I want you to call a counselor and make an appointment. Yeah. Okay. Promise. I mean, the, promise, I need the promise, counselor promise. to help me write the letter. <laughs> <laughs> the whole idea is terrifying. So it is. It's, I can no, it's super terrifying. One first. <laughs> you may have to write two or three. You may have to write two or three. Yeah. Okay. You may have to. Yeah. <clears throat> There's a moment that it's going to happen that you're going to realize your dad is somebody who is intentionally disregarding your requests for how you can best be loved. Yeah. And that disregard is violence. It's immaturity, and it has to stop. And most of us hope that our parents will be the ones to stop doing violence. And often, we're the ones that have to put up the boundaries and say, no more. I mean, yeah, yeah, it all makes sense. Yeah. It's all very logical. I wish I had seven easy steps to fix this. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I need the baby steps for uh <laughs> Exactly. Well, hey, buy my new book and will <laughs> I mean, I wish I had a man. I wish I did. <laughs> hey, yeah. but here's no. the thing. Hang on the line. Here's what I'm going to do. Okay. I'm going to, um, Austin's. Kelly's at home. She doesn't work on these days. Just kidding. She's actually not. She's actually sick. She's not doing. She's not. She's not feeling well. Uh, we we miss her. Um, but Austin uh, is here, and I want you to stay on the line. We're gonna get you get your information, and I'm gonna get you hooked up for the pre order of my new book that will walk through these things with you. And Thank um, you. you have that. But I'm only doing that if you promise you'll write that letter, read it to your husband, and make a, a counseling appointment. Cool. I promise. Same team, same Thank dream. You. Same team, same team, same dream. I'm trying to think of the cheesiest things I could say. I can't even say it with straight face. Like all right, cool. All right, Danny, you're awesome. Awesome, awesome. Thanks for calling. 